Hello and welcome to the QDR Crusaders, episode 102 for June 17th, 2014. I momentarily uh, forgot how to read numbers, but it's okay, the stroke is over. Uh, my name is Rainbow Plasma, I'm the organizer and this week's editor of this podcast, and today I'm joined by... We're in a one, and special guest coordinator of the show. <laughs> I'm Atmospark. I do the questions and the Google, and not the Google Doc, that's our thing, and the DeviantArt and some other stuff. Yeah. So today we are, uh, first of all, we're a very chillaxed podcast today. Uh, it's a Saturday afternoon, which is a little bit different. So we're all, I guess it's a Sunday morning for you, uh, Atmospark. I know you'd say it, so I said it first. Um, Thank you. <laughs> uh, so yeah, it's it's a it's a chill chilled out podcast. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna take we're gonna sit back, we're gonna relax, and we're gonna have ourselves a, a nice little art show here. This is the first like actual themed episode in like a long time, because the last one that we did was before all of our episode 100 stuff, and it was before the Assassin Monkey guest and all the main six stuff. Uh, the last one was actually and the crab battle stuff. It was all the way back to episode 902, so that's 100, or 100 episodes. 900 episodes. 902, jeez. <laughs> wow. It's, it's, well, this is 102, and the last one was 92, so that's uh, that's 10 episodes, two and a half months since we've actually sat down and kind of done something like this, so yeah, it's kind of cool. But we're going to keep it relaxed. But we're missing someone today, guys. Is anyone Who? else going to pick up on that? No, no. No. <laughs> I'll just, okay. I'll just, I'll just talk missing? for an hour. It's good. I'm fine with this. Okay. Well, we're missing Flutter Guy because what reason? He's off in Philadelphia. Ah. Uh, Philadelphia. He's, he's uh, uh, uh. You made a pony pun out of a he's pony. He's visiting. He's visiting old an old roommate for uh, his roommate's cool. birthday, so he couldn't make it up today. I met some of his like old friends once. They were super chill. Just like this podcast. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm like, I'm still a little sick, so I'm just kind of sitting here sipping tea. Like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah um, you guys listening right now sort of <clears throat> be sort of happy that you didn't have to experience all of Burns coughing and the, the gross noises he was making just before we started recording. <laughs> yeah, oh, I'm real glad that that just happened. <sighs> yeah. Really good. Seriously, Enjoy Bernie, that. you should seriously see a doctor, but all that phlegm you, you have. You can't tell me what to do. <laughs> Uh, okay, so um, one more little thing that we want to talk about uh, for you guys today, because we're coming up to the uh, summertime in the Northern Hemisphere, uh, which is con time. And a couple of big conventions, oh, conventions. usually happen over the summer. Um, so we wanted to talk to you guys a little bit about the ones that we're going to be going to. Um, and yeah, so Burned, why don't you start off? I'm going to PonyCon US. That's what? <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, two, three weeks, two, three weeks, right? And the end, or July 4th weekend, so 4th to 6th, I'm going to be going to Everfree Northwest. And Flutter Guy's going to be there, too. He's actually going to be flying from the East Coast all the way to the West Coast, and we're going to be at the Everfree Northwest Pony Convention Spectacular. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, yeah. So you two guys be will be out there um, for that weekend, which will be cool, so... Uh, that's all. The reason why we're bringing it up now is because these things are actually being been booked now. So uh, that's it's official. Yeah, yeah. So th those two are going to be out there, and then um, in August we also have something else, don't we, Burnt? We do. We have the BronyCon as well in Baltimore, Maryland. Correct. Yes. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know states geography. So sure. I know it's Baltimore. I don't know. Yeah, I don't it's know. in Maryland. Okay, is that a state? Yes. Cool. Cool. Oh yeah, you're Canadian. I was like, what are you stupid? I learned, I learned something just, new today. Just foreign. It's okay. Yeah, I'm just foreign. <clears throat> so, so yeah, um, that uh, people going to BronyCon are myself, Rainbow Plasma, um, Burned, Burned, and Flutter Guy will be Come going up to that me. one. Um, Atmos Park obviously will not be going to these conventions because he lives in Australia. And holy cow, that <laughs> is a be, long way away. He'll be there in spirit. I've yeah. done it once. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so maybe maybe in a couple of years we can get him back. Spirit being cons past, but but it's not really it's not really gonna happen. So whoever was out at Everfree Northwest last year got a treat because they got to meet at Moose Park. But yeah, so Everfree Northwest, uh, which is July 
something, let me pull up my calendar, July 4th, 5th, and 6th. Yeah. So the weekend of July 5th uh, is Everfree Northwest, and that'll be Flutter Guy and Burnt. And then uh, on in August, the weekend of the 2nd, so the 1st, the 2nd, and the 3rd, I believe, that will be uh, those two plus myself. Um, this is kind of like the exact same plan we had uh, last year, except I switched from doing an Everett Free to doing a BronyCon, because I hadn't done BronyCon before. Hey. So, yeah. That's our con news, so uh, if you guys want to come say hi, that would be awesome. Um, I don't really know what you guys are doing for Everfree Northwest, but for BronyCon, we're going to try and you know, keep up with you guys. I know it's a bigger convention, so it'll be a little bit harder, but it'd be cool to see some of you guys out there. You should all think of me being at home and sad while you guys are all having fun at Pony stuff. Oh, shush you. No. It was cool because last BronyCon, we had like a bunch of people who just like randomly bumped into this and were like, oh, you guys are carrying cameras. You look important. Hey, you're cute at Crusaders. Or like, hey, I randomly know your face somehow because I'm awesome. <laughs> yeah. Um, so like people would come up to us and they'd be like, hey, you're you're burned. And we'd be like, yeah, look kid, it's me. And we'd like talk to them and it was really cool. There was like a handful of people uh, who all came up to us and I like, got pictures of a couple of them and stuff. But, I mean, you're welcome to, like, tweet us or, mm -hmm. like, comment on their DeviantArt page and be like, yeah, I'm going to be there, too. Yeah. You yeah. Know? I, I, think know. People, I think people overestimate how, like, quote-unquote popular we are and, like, underestimate how much we're totally chill with just, like, meeting up with people. So <laughs> a lot of times people will be like, oh, no, I can't, I can't talk to them. Just, just like, like the... just send us a message. <laughs> we'll, 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 we, you know... Like anyone else, we're not going to, like, go super out of our way to, like, head back to, like, some sort of weird location. But, hey, come meet us at BronyCon or Everfree Northwest and some come say hi. I mean, everyone who saw us last year at Everfree Northwest probably can tell you. We just, you know, we we, we enjoy talking with new people. So, yeah. It's like we are on the Everfree Network. Oh, it's like they're, they're so horse famous. So, oh. <laughs> <laughs> can't talk yeah. to them. I don't know if we're going to be doing recording stuff this time. I, I know personally, I kind of want to just walk around the convention um, more. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm what you like to refer to as what I like to refer to as a horse scrub. <laughs> I I am not very famous at all. All right. Well, we've gotten burned stuck in some sort of temporal horse famous loop. Um, <laughs> so so that's, that's he has like, he has like thirty really... horse points now. No, uh, no, he's it's, it's rapidly declining. He's losing them. They're falling out of his grasp. It's true. He's at one on point, I reached my horse pinnacle, if you will, and I've fallen from grace. <laughs> From horse uh, race. Uh, my horse pinnacle. The pinnacle of horsiness. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. It's actually coming out in the form of phlegm. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds about right, yeah. Anyways, man, uh, you know what? Because Flutter Guy's not here and he's usually the one doing all the art stuff, I'm going to have burned. You're going you're gonna to take the lead on this art stuff today. Oh, what? Yeah, yeah. You're oh, going gonna, to right. take the lead on it. So, so why don't you bring us right into it, bud? All right, so how does he do it? So our first piece for today is... What's our theme, Burned? Oh, God, I screwed up already. That's our, okay. Our, our theme this week is Chrysalis. Yay, yeah, Chrissy. It's pony a cheese legs. Succubus, I believe. What? Right? She's the horse of suc Succubus horse. I don't know. She's a... What? Something. I don't think you know... I don't think that word means what you think it means. Succubus, a demon who sucks love and like a bunch of other things out of men. Oh right, yeah. You know, I keep forgetting that the changelings thing is all about love. Like, I keep forgetting that because like, because we haven't seen too much of them in the actual show. Like, it was just like one episode, right? So <laughs> he was living off of the. Yeah, look. no, I'm all stupid. Right. Yeah, that was that was definitely Come. my bad. All right. Anyway, it's Chrysalis, the queen of the changelings, is yes. our theme this week, because there was quite a few awesome. Uh, art pieces that had came out like at a specific time like a week or two ago or something yeah. we were looking at them and we we're like these are pretty cool we'd like to feature them but you know 100 episode shenanigans so you know what's you know what's funny all of the pieces that we picked out that motivated us to make this episode didn't make it in <laughs> 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 like we we picked out three or four and we were like wow there's some really good chrysalis art recently we should pick up on chrysalis because that's a good theme and then we looked through and none of them made it <laughs> uh, anyways yeah so yeah 
So let's, how does Flutter Guy say, jump right in. Uh, our first piece for this week is Queen Chrysalis Sketch by Kaiserin? Kaiserin? Probably Kaiserin. 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 Mm-hmm. Kaiserin. Yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. So right off the bat, right? Like this one, this one is, is really cool to me because it mixes traditional <clears throat> with digital. Um, mm-hmm. And we don't often get to feature traditional because it's DeviantArt. It's an online, you know, repository for art. So oftentimes it kind of lends itself to digital art. But we do get to see some really awesome traditional stuff here. So the the artist, uh, Kaiserin, she has taken uh, kind of a, an ink sketch. Uh, I think, I believe she uses something called, uh, yeah, in the description, um, India ink. I'm not too well versed in uh, traditional mediums, but it's a, it's basically a, t- a type of ink that you use, and mm-hmm. then uh, it's I a don't special know... type, type of ink used mainly for sketching. Right. Cool. From what, um, I, from what but, I can get. Yeah. Then she she went over it. Uh, I'm not sure with maybe maybe to add the colors, maybe to add, but basically she went over it in Photoshop and added a bunch of stuff too. So I I really like the way that it's kind of a blend between uh, traditional and digital. Yeah, it's I don't know. It's it's almost like. I think she probably colored it in Photoshop um, and then sort of made sure she got the canvas textures and stuff as well mixed in with the colors. And there's a bit of like glowiness India to ink it is as just well. Black. Hmm? Yeah. I think a uh, good thing to note about India ink though is it's uh, it's not like a pen ink like that you might think of. It's like it's it's a dipping kind of ink like mm-hmm. you have a utensil that's like whatever like an artist like, tool. You, you, see, you see in like the old school uh with the, with the quills and stuff, it's dipping. Yeah, like so that. like with the quill that you like dip it in the ink, but you can also use India ink for like people will use other like s- tools and stuff like like twigs or sticks or brushes even. Mm-hmm. So like it, India ink is a specific black type of ink that is a ve- like very dark pigment, but has multiple applications. Is like almost I've like actually a, got a I've actually got a bottle kind of, of it ink, sitting around. If that makes sense, um, but more often than not, it's just like. Uh, pen dipped in india ink and then whatever but it's like, so fountain, you can, like a you fountain can, pen type thing yeah so but you can dip the ink to control the like how much liquid or whatever is on that you use on your medium so it kind of has some like artistic freedom if that if that makes sense so like mm-hmm. some of the finer lines on chrysalis's tail and hair you know you dip the pen a little bit and then make that a very quick mark where like some of the deeper thicker black lines on like her uh like legs and stuff you you know you dip it a little bit more ink onto the pen or whatever and push a little harder so it has like yeah. a little bit more artistic freedom and control if that makes sense yeah yeah i think it's it's what a lot of um like tablet softwares like a lot of digital suites try to imitate yeah with pen you can use it and stuff for like calligraphy that. as well with like a with a fountain pen you can different different shape nibs to get different yeah, size exactly. lines yeah yeah what was the what was the artist burn that we looked at before uh, who often does a similar thing where uh, they, they take a sketch and then they add, like, glowy effects. And they did a bunch of, like, League of Le- Legends references. Oh, that was... Um... Discommunicator? Yep. Yeah. Is that the actual artist's name? Yeah, that was, that was a complete guess. Yeah, cool. you nailed it right on the head there. Uh, yeah. Discommunicator does a bunch of, like, League of Legends artwork and a bunch of other, like, crossover artwork, but is kind of really well known for making ridiculously... Um, detailed like graphite pencil sketches and then like digitally colorizing them and stuff yeah with like interesting like neon lights and stuff way back in our sketching episode uh it featured like the twilight like, wizardy one mm-hmm. remember still one of the best examples of purposefully not filling in the surroundings and yeah. your brain filling it in that's still the thing that when i whenever we talk about it whenever we like say like oh when we talk about that point in particular, I always, like, in my head, I visualize that piece. Yeah. It was super ironic, too, because, like, right at that specific time, like, in my school schooling career, too, I was taking a drawing course in college, and, like, that was the point which my instructor, like, made to us and, like, showed us, like, really famous drawings by, like, uh, Picasso or whoever, um, of, like, sketches and stuff, uh, and Van Gogh. Van Gogh was a really good sketch artist, where, like, did where they did exactly as I was trying to like say in that episode where they would leave specific parts like more undetailed but had very like um methodically like thought out like lines that were like simplistic to fill in areas you know so right, right. it was like right at the point in my schooling like that was a point 
that was being made and all of a sudden we had a sketching episode where it's like that point was hugely relevant yeah Mm -hmm. yeah it was good timing uh now that rule doesn't really apply to this piece of course but uh i definitely see some uh some similarities between between disc communicators work and, and this kind of thing although this artist has kind of made the the medium in which that it's printed upon very obvious as well now of course because we don't have any like middle ground progress shots we can't tell you know like wi- like when is this colored or or you know what part is digital and what part is traditional so we can't really guarantee anything but we we do have this kind of canvasy background kind of effect um and and you can see that 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 the piece is limited not by the borders of the actual picture but there's another like like almost page like thing within the borders and there's also a little bit of a vignette as well around it. Yeah. I can make an educated guess, though. Like, it's really, like, uh, what is it? Obvious to me that, like, the the color, obviously, then the green, like, parts on the bottom and the black outline are, like, digitally done, like, done in Photoshop. And also the texture on the back of everything, that, like, vertical lines going throughout the entirety, mm-hmm. I'm almost positive is a... Uh, Hmm. It could be like a. It looks uh, like it might be a bit of a mix. Oh, I was I was gonna say it's definitely a um like filter or something or texture put on in Photoshop, but it could just be that it didn't scan. It could it could be well, the well it could the be canvas. like a thicker paper that would work better with India ink, right? Yeah. yeah, it it could be. I could see that, but I can't. I'm trying to think. I can't think of any kind of paper or medium that you would draw on that would have vertical lines like that. It would have to be something very canvasy, huh? Yeah, like a real, like yeah. a really, really thick sort of card or something. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Anyways, I, uh, I do, I do like, yeah. I do like that kind of aspect though of of having digital and traditional and 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 the lines are kind of blurred between them, right? And having it mixed so so well that you can't tell which is which, really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To a point. <laughs> Yeah, to a to a certain point, there are some things like like Burn was saying the 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 glowy green flames at the bottom are like mm-hmm. well, they're definitely they're definitely yeah right and and the outline like the border where it cuts off obviously with the scan it cut off yeah. I've gone over and made that yeah. sort of cut out border it also kind of looks like it's being presented in like a three D scene almost like it's in some sort of three D program where this is like a texture on something I don't know why mm. I get that kind of feeling um, but yeah. Anyways, that was I. I think it's really cool, and uh, I I like that mix between the two. Yeah. Oh yeah, my job. So yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, can we move on to our next one? Sure. Sounds good. Alrighty. Um. So our next piece is by is "Be Prepared" by Sophie Cabra, which is a traditional acrylic painting, which is illustrated by Sophie Cabra, and then, uh painted over in acrylics by Ken Cat. So it's a uh, partnership, a uh, collaboration between the two artists, Sophie Cabra and Ken Cat. Right. I mean, 90% of Sophie Cabra work is often uh, then colored by Ken Cat. Yeah. Well, it um, was, but just recently, like, Sophie Cabra has been just spitting out the traditional art. Is that mm-hmm. stuff colored by Ken Cat too? Let me check. It, it is. Okay, wow. <laughs> so yeah, ninety <laughs> percent. Yeah, no, it, it is. And and I mean, I think I think, you know, some people might look at that and they might go like, oh well, you know, she's featuring it on her page, but you know, it's only really half a blah, 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 blah you know stuff like that. But you know, I I I disagree heavily. And also, by the way, I just checked and this was one of the ones that inspired this episode. So I lied. One of them did make it. Um, <laughs> But mm-hmm. but yeah, I, I I really like this kind of collaboration between the two, and and you know I think I think it's really important to to feature your strengths, and, and and as much as it's good to work in your weaknesses, you know if you have a nice collaboration going on, I don't see why you you shouldn't keep going with it, and they obviously have a system that works, and I think at the end of the day, you know as as art uh, not as artists as as viewers of art that that we should focus less on you know, like how it's made. That should be like an extra thing, you know? Initially, it's more like, what is this art piece? And then you, when you dig a little bit deeper, you know, then you can start going, oh, that's cool. It's made by blah, blah, blah. So. Yeah. Because like Ken, Ken Kent and Sophie Cabra are both good friends. They're both awesome artists. Uh, it's just yeah. Sophie Cabra really likes 
illustrating and like that's her skill and her talent if you will and ken cat is an awesome colorist and an awesome painter and so yeah they work yeah. together and they make something great you know mm-hmm. they just yeah. they use sophie cabra's deviant art to you know reduce confusion and both of them uploading in different places yeah well. and, and of and of course like uh you know you i can understand how if your if your page isn't dedicated to fan art of certain shows right you might want to separate that a little bit um it's it's a personal preference as well, you know. So, again, they they seem to have found a system for it. So good for them. Yeah, I, it also might be a uh, a way for Ken get to release her um, in a brony because if you go to her DeviantArt, there are no ponies in her gallery. It's all yeah. animals. And I mean, you you might also look at that and go like, hey, you know, this is something that they can do together, right? Yeah. Because you know, you know, maybe you know, Sophie Cabra, if she spent the time, she could do it as well, right? Yeah. But, you know, when when they do stuff like this, then they collaborate together. And I mean, it's it's like the podcast, you know, like we we, uh, you know, we, we work together on this kind of stuff. And, and it keeps us it keeps us talking to each other and it keeps us kind of interacting with each other. And it's a thing that we can do together. So uh, that's yeah, really nice. It keeps us making content. Yeah. I imagine that's something that kind of propels the both of them as well. Yeah. Motivates them back and forth. Right. Because there's more than one person. There's someone else here that you're kind of working with. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. So, um, Bernd, you pointed out a really interesting thing about this piece and, and the kind of um, the storyline behind it, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Um, the first thing I noticed and the reason why I really wanted to feature this piece and why I think it's great is it's a uh, um, reference to uh, the Lion King. It's a really awesome scene in the Lion King where all the hyenas are marching through Scar's lair and they're like doing the song or whatever and... Um, plotting to overthrow the Mufasa's kingdom, or I think that's his dad's name. <laughs> yep. Yep. Um, and Sophie Carver's actually been doing kind of like the series of uh, Lion King crossovers. There's another one with Sakura as Rafiki, and um, I think maybe one or two others. But like, I absolutely love this scene. This it's really iconic, I guess, to kind of my youth because when you're young, like scary things like this kind of I don't know, almost scar you or, or leave an engraving in your mm-hmm. mind, or at least for me. Um, and like the color and tone of this whole scene is like really, really famous, like dark blues, uh, muted blues, and then really bright greens along with mm-hmm. Scar and like his color scheme and stuff. Uh, Disney was always really famous for using those color schemes. I mean, just to just ask a spirit about it or well, like in our color episode and stuff, I think she ranted a little about Disney and her color schemes, but yeah. anyway, so this, this is an homage to that. Uh, so we have, a. Uh, it's actually my favorite Lion King song. Oh, yeah? Yeah. The uh, Be Prepared song. <laughs> it was really good. The hyenas were just really good, too. Mm-hmm. So you've got the shadows mm-hmm. of the um, changelings on the wall, and then uh, Chrysalis and Scar's little perch watching them as they march, you know? Yeah. 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 I I, I think that Sophie Cabra um, does a really good job of kind of weaving alternative narratives into a lot of her pieces. Um, right now, she's doing a, a series on Tumblr, which is slowly making its way over to DeviantArt, where it's you know all the, all of our traditional ponies. Um, Kennerlot in, High or something. Yeah, in, right? in high school, um, and just kind of goofing around with that kind of setting. Um, again, kind of like maybe using that as a motivating factor to make a lot more pieces. Yeah. Um, but, if, but there's always if, these like stories weaved in there, you know. Yeah, if you guys are interested, it's kennerlothigh.tumblr.com, and it's actually it's really cute. Yeah, yeah, and she's also posting uh, it on her DeviantArt uh, slowly. Yeah. Um, but but yeah, there's there's these kind of um, you get a little bit more out of a Sophie Cabra piece um, than I I think you do out of other pieces. You kind you get kind of like a an impression of of, of the mood of it and 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 you know me and my uh, facial expressions and emotions and stuff. But the really th- the cool thing that stands out to me is the fact that you get these kind of moods without doing the over the top expressions, right? Because you can do expressions like way over the top kind of cartoony style, and then you can do more of a realistic human kind of uh, level of expressions where it's never too crazy over the top, right? And and yeah. I think Sophie Cabra matches up with more of that type you know mm-hmm. which again the, the 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 type where it's not super over the top but you still oh, get yeah, gotcha, gotcha. a lot of these met these um, you know emotions out of the thing yeah she, she's very she's story. very good at subtlety like that yeah that's yeah. that's the great thing about being an illustrator or cartoonist is it gives you kind of that freedom to choose what you enjoy more you know to 
be like have a more uh cartoonistic uh you know facial expressions and not like not over the top or go like fully over the top or do something unique uh you know like and it just oh gosh, it works so many names come ways, to mind right? you know yeah yeah, yeah it's not exactly. necessarily yeah. like oh i'm glad she did this because because the other one is worse you know it's just a, it's a different way of doing it but it's always stuck with me because i always like to see uh you know like stuff that's kind of rooted within the emotions of people and yeah, like, i guess uh, i guess ponies but i feel like gray stripe is a really great example too yeah. When it comes to like facial expressions and right, but I think gray stripe falls on the other end of that spectrum. Yeah, but it, examples of you know spectrums or styles. What, right. What have yeah. You. Yeah. So like so like gray stripe as an example often does a lot of like over the top stuff, but it still kind of conveys a similar thing. Um, yeah. Anyways, um, that's that's something that really stands out to me. It's still even in this piece, you know, like like there's just a small smirk, but you get a lot out of it, you know, like her her kind of uh, disheveled hair and, and and the the colors lend itself a lot to it. It doesn't necessarily just have to be the character itself, the colors of the scene, that kind of thing, just kind of convey a general tone, right? Mm-hmm. So yeah, I I mean like I don't like honestly, that's kind of it for me on this piece i don't know if you guys want to talk about something else on this piece but that's that's kind of what i wanted to talk about for this piece and i kind of went off on a rant about sophie cabra herself (laughs) i wonder if um with these sort of things where it's sort of a homage to something that we all sort of grew up with and we loved in our childhood whether that sort of gives us more of a sort of of a meaning to a piece like this I was when I was looking through all the art that we had linked before. I sort of skipped past this because I didn't, I didn't properly look at it. And now that I look at it and I realize that yes, it is actually an homage to the Lion King. I sort of I liked it more. Right, right. I can see where you're coming from there, and I think I think the the right word to use there is it could definitely do that. But I I for example like I I get the reference now, but I didn't until Burned explained it to me. Um, but it didn't change my view on it you know like i still really liked it before so um i think it, i think it definitely can kind of skew your perspective but it just depends really you know mm-hmm. yep but i mean that's why crossovers are popular right you know so yeah yeah because is a very scar-esque character if you will you know overthrowing the kingdom and all that jazz anyway anything else for this one uh nope i'm good Alrighty, let's move on to our third piece of this episode, which is The un- Unsung End by Husi, which is an artist that we love to feature. And this is a digital digital painting, so digital landscape painting, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Now, which is what Husi's really famous for. Yeah, now I will admit, when we looked through a lot of our pieces here, we wanted to... Be careful not to stray too far into like the depressing zone, <laughs> because I, <laughs> the I think depression zone. I think I think Chrysalis, out of any character in MLP, is the is the most kind of dark and sinister character. Uh, her episodes were very, like kind of like whoa, they're they're, the they're best. quite, they're they're quite dark. <laughs> um, and then uh, you know, so we didn't want to get into like too creepy either, but. But I think this one, I think this one comes off pretty well, um, and, and I think you know it still kind of gets you. It really kind of gets you, and it and it makes you feel a little bit unsettled and stuff like that. But it also has a lot more to it than just what we're seeing with her, right? Because Bernd, you were mentioning that one of the reasons why you wanted to talk about this one was the was the beautiful sky and the and the yeah. environment around the scene. Yeah, it's that that was actually definitely a wild feature. The you know, the environment that's created and this kind of um I don't know, life given to everything around it. Uh this like barren landscape and stuff. Uh I don't know, it's just it's it's really beautiful and it's something that gets me more and more as I, you know, like create an a or get an appreciation for art. If that makes sense. Landscapes are just constantly something that, uh, like, really well-made landscapes because it's it's hard. Like, there's kind of like a trick and a science to it almost, and we rant about atmospheric perspective a lot on the show, and like that's extremely important. It's obviously utilized here to its full potential, which you know makes this 2D flat image seem so vast and epic and and all that. And Hussey's a really great artist at you know 
utilizing those artistic components, if you will. And even just like clouds, like clouds are also sometimes really hard, something that artists struggle with. And like the clouds here have depth, like they have like a vast amount of space given to them. And, um, and like this, the lighting, the composition, uh, you know, there's, there's, there's a lot. But. Atmospheric perspective. Atmospheric. When will people learn? <laughs> never, never. And there's also, I, I, there's also a bit of a, a bit of a value shift that kind of lends itself to uh, separation between foreground and background. Um, you can kind of trace a, a neat little line along the rocks in the in kind of the middle of the piece, and that's kind of like the the rocky platform that the characters are on right here. And then there's a separation, and then you get all of the mountains and the clouds and stuff in the background. So I think I think that's really cool, and I think you know that's I mean that's just why atmospheric perspective works in art. You know, like it's just. <laughs> the base definition right there the shift in value separates the the foreground from the background you know yeah mm -hmm. it's also a bit of um i think we talked about this in our rarity episode when flutter guy asked me about uh kind of like is there framing going on in a la in this landscape piece that we were featuring with rarity there's that same concept that we were talking about here where uh the artist is kind of inventing where uh, he w wants your eye to travel, if you will. So, like the rocks on the right hand side, how they kind of slant downwards and point inwards, and the kind of that epic um, canyon or crater thing, like in the background, being placed like right there, perfectly in between the rocks on the side, and then like chrysalis on the left, you know, and kind right. of everything being placed right. exactly where the artist wants it. So it helps carry your eye around and focus and bring your eye downwards and like the lighting in the top right kind of being cast down to the bottom left, making you look at, you know, kind of that area right in between, right above Chrysalis and whatnot going on over there. Yeah, let's talk Let's talk about that lighting for a second, because I really like the way that it causes you to treat the piece as almost like a slow reveal. Because, you know, everything... I wouldn't say that this piece is very dark overall, even though it's got a lot of blacks and grays i wouldn't say that i would look at this and say that it was tremendously dark but there is definitely a difference between the rest of the piece and this light that's shining through the clouds and so you know that kind of stands out to us and so so it it, it brings us up there and then the rays of um sunlight kind of create this 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 triangle or this cone coming down which which then kind of leads you along the rocks to chrysalis and it's almost like it's almost like uh in your head and all of course all of this happens in about half a second right you know a fraction of a second when your brain processes this but it's like a camera pan that starts from these clouds and then moves down onto this scene that mm -hmm. you're seeing right and then and mm -hmm. then maybe up the tree so um yeah it's funny because I, I keep mentioning we always mention uh, how your how people will look at a piece and they'll start somewhere and they'll go here and they'll go over there and that's kind of like the the predicted path of someone's eye across a piece, right? All of that happens without you even realizing it, right? Like that happens like fractions of a second usually. Um, no, actually, that's a really good point. Yeah. It reminded me of something because you can tell a really really well crafted art piece if it does sort of the opposite where there's like where is your eye go and it just happens like when you look at the piece and it like it'll go there and then it's carried somewhere the opposite of that is like how is your eye carried as you're staring at the piece and actually appreciating like we've been sitting here and staring at this thing for maybe about five minutes now yeah um like there's lots of stuff <laughs> right in this art piece in particular that carries our eye places one thing that really catches my eye and makes it wander is these birds kind of like flying in the background where it carries it kind of through that light beam and also into the canyon um the tree as you mentioned is something that like brings your eye up and carries it into, like the clouds and i mentioned the rocks on the right hand side how they're slanted like downwards and like we'll look at all this little like narrative going on with chrysalis and the changeling like there are lots of little subtle things like that and like the light rays coming out of the clouds also point in directions and make my eye look so there's things that will physically make you your eye wander and make you look at other details as you start to notice them if that if that makes sense and that's also something that is like really common used in like masterpiece uh uh, landscape paintings and stuff where they'll add like little trails of deer or whatever you know 
Yeah, yeah. No, that's a, that's a really good distinction. I'm I'm glad that you kind of talked a little bit about that distinction because there is there is kind of a difference between the two. One of them one of them being your immediate journey through the piece, and then once you've kind of settled, then what's happening, right? Because you know you're not always going to analyze all of the piece in a fraction of a second. Um, so so yeah, that's that's a really good distinction to make and. and and I really like the way that you talked about the birds in particular, because I don't think that the birds are necessarily something that, and of course this might be different for everyone, but I don't think the birds are necessarily something that you would immediately go to and follow, but they're there and they form this kind of pattern that, you know, again, is connected to points of interest in the in yeah. in the piece. So like the top of the birds is very close to that very bright light, and the bottom of the birds is really close to that tree, which is really close to the <laughs> whole scene that we're supposed to be kind of looking at. So there's there are connections there to to be made. Also, I'm holding like a <laughs> stick in my between my <laughs> index finger and my thumb, and like waving like like some sort of Composer like poser slash uh, pony musician. Like, yeah, composer, uh, like pointing at certain things in the piece, and it. You should connect it to your forehead and be a unicorn. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look, it's it's black, so it's like a change thing. Right. Anyways, no, um, um, there was a really awesome critique I got on a painting that I made that kind of made something click, and it's kind of relevant to what we were talking about with like where your eye travels. Um, a critique I had gotten on something that I had made was that my teacher was saying that he, he liked aspects of it because there wasn't a specific certain place for his eye to rest, like as he looked at different like subjects and things in a painting of mine, uh, my my final, uh, it would like cause his eye to wander and look at different planes because I like blended things into other things and blah, 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 blah. blah. Um, but it's, uh, there's the opposite of that is like an art piece that you often see a lot and especially pony artwork where it's like your eye goes there like bam like there is a pony in the center of the screen and you're gonna look at it you know what i mean um like the queen chrysalis sketch was kind of like you like you look at the uh, the chrysalis and like there isn't much for your eye to wander it's like the subject is this this pony and i'm gonna look at it you don't really look at anything else yep. where the piece like this is like the complete opposite like there is so much your eye is forced to wander and look and appreciate all these different things. So, like, those are the two, like, opposite sides of the spectrum. You know what I mean? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I would argue that this piece is a, a more complete yeah, yeah. piece than the other two that we've featured so far. Um, really quick, uh, the narrative going on. I was going to mention that. I, 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 I kind of like this little narrative. It's almost, like, cute yet dark, you know? Um, with, I guess it, it's still a little cute for some reason, but... Uh, you know, it has sad tones or whatever going on where, and Chrysalis, I guess, is trying to, like, revive or heal this, uh like, lost changeling of hers as they were banished mm -hmm. in that, you know, that scene in the end of uh, the wedding episode. She's got, like, little yeah. hearts, yeah. you know, floating off of her little uh, broken horn or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I just like that little yeah. thing going on, you know. No, I didn't even notice so. the hearts. Yeah, no, it's, it's really cool. There is definitely a narrative there, but I'll leave that up to uh, our viewers yep. to go check out for themselves. Still favorite scene in My Little Pony is Twilight getting dragged to hell. Anyway. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, all right. So now our last piece is, our fourth and last piece is Flufflepuff and Queen Chrysalis by Saushin. Yeah, it is. Whoa, this came out of left field. <laughs> <Right>. Holy. <laughs> Suddenly, we are out of the barren wasteland of a queen trying to cause one of her, like, broken and dead soldiers to come back. <laughs> and now we're into Fluffy Pony! <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, we had to we had to include at least one like, piece with Fluffy Pony. This is, the like, most, I think, the most awesome to... contrast, if you will, you know, to the character and to the subject matter. Just this. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean we we I mean we'll probably have a fluffle puff episode eventually. So but so but we we did want to include this cuz it was kind of I don't know, it was kind of a break from the old uh the the old depressing themes so far. And also also this was the only piece that every single one of us immediately was like, "Yeah, we're doing this." One. Yeah. <laughs> so 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 yeah, Burn, you were you were really into this one and it kind of surprised me. So do you want to tell me a little bit about like why you love this one so much? I I think it's just something about Xiaoshen, like, th like just that artist. I, I, 
I don't know. I just love everything about how how Xiaoshen does like digital painting or period, just like tackles different aspects of it. So like in uh, Session was the artist that did the Flutter Bat piece in our Fluttershy episode. Uh, right, and that's that, one that's one of my favorite pieces from the last uh, last half yeah. year or so. That that Flutter Bat one. So I feel like the colors, like obviously the color palette in this is very bright and very cheery, but I feel like the colors that Session uses are always like really well done. Um, everything's always really well molded. Like the characters always look extremely well done. Um, I would. Uh, th- also, this artist did the Discord piece that we featured in our discord episode interesting or elements of harmony episode anyway but i think what gets me the most about this one is um how the characters how how they're painted i really enjoy their style i like the fact that they you know they don't have outlines so it's not like that traditional mlp styly thing but you know it's still very iconic ponies or whatever and it's placed in kind of this ridiculous happy uh hills and tree i feel like there's something very iconic about the kid based make a happy hill in tree with like scene you know what i mean <laughs> like there's something yeah. about just like just plain green hills and hills in the background and a tree with like characters in them that just screams like kindergarten art that's very yeah. like happy go lucky you know the sun has a smiley face on it you, you know yeah. what i mean <laughs> yeah, and, and there's just something that you look at, and you and you just kind of there's like a there's like a part of you deep down that's just like oh, I like this, and it makes me and it makes me happy, just like a just like a base kind of like childlike comfort happy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I definitely I definitely do really like it, and, and just to kind of you know, I don't know, not to go off too much into a tangent, but I do I do really. I do really kind of enjoy the whole Flufflepuff thing, and honestly, like, like I almost enjoy it just to kind of see the character uh, kind of pass around, and and, and I, I like when things like this can inspire artists to to make cool, cool art pieces, and and you know, I I do, I do really like the design of Chrysalis, and so it's nice to see that that because this one person who happened to get really popular with this Flufflepuff thing. Uh, because this person is is included chrysalis in there we're starting to see more and more of those pieces which is nice because other characters uh, say like a like a sombra have been kind of left behind i think in a lot of a lot of times uh in the in terms of art whereas this is kind of giving like new life to a mm-hmm. character uh something i just noticed as i've kind of been like like really studying and looking at this piece like obviously as i as soon as I see it, it's bam, instantly aesthetically pleasing to me. So I was kind of like trying to dissect it and see why that is. And I give a lot of credit to Shen because I've seen other pieces that the artist has made and like how well crafted they are when it comes to like refracted lighting or mm-hmm. like tons of just really advanced concepts. Um, and I'm, I was looking at the colors because like that's the biggest thing that hits you when you look at this piece is like the color of everything. Um, and the first thing I noticed is that Chrysalis's crown is the wrong color. It's supposed to be the same color as her hair, but it's pink. So what the artist has mm-hmm. actually done is he's done a awesome concept in art where you um you mirror colors. I think mirroring colors is that the right term. It has to do with composition, but uh, where what is it? I'm trying to think of the wording, but where colors there's repetition in colors. There you go. Where there's repetition in colors or repeated colors in a piece, it's usually done intentionally to like make a piece seem more complete more whole and also seem more aesthetically pleasing so well the places where it's present is obviously chris's little crown is matching a uh, flufflepuff and the flowers on the ground are also kind of the same shade of pink and flufflepuff and the other place where it's really prevalent is if you look at chrysalis's hair and tail it's the same kind of value of blue that the sky is in the background and like the top corner and then the top right so our eye will see and like look at chrysalis but that same color is also being reflected in the corners of our vision which makes the whole piece seem complete and seem like it like fits together i guess come uh there's a, there's another word for it but it's escaping me words are words are hard and also the the green of her eyes is also kind of slightly reflecting all of the green in this like landscape around her and stuff like that right mm-hmm. right i was gonna, i was going to mention that yeah. the, the whole uh the whole fact that that the color of her hair matches the color of Flufflepuff's eyes which if you look back on some of our older pieces it's the blue is really accentuated in order to kind of uh 
get that effect yeah. and, and in order to get that that kind of match like between tints two. on chrysalis are physically like purposefully shift to kind of like match this yeah tone yeah if you the will. lighting the lighting on chrysalis is also pink even though it's not just the lighting that would reflect off of love above the uh, there's pink on her and i think if you were to look at if you were to look carefully you'll see a little bit of blue shading uh, or like a greeny blue shading on on Flufflepuff. so again it's kind of the mm-hmm. that matching uh yeah the, that that's matching a good point i just noticed that where i chrysalis instead of being the dark black or gray with like green that everyone's used to she's um shaded in like she's actually like a dark violet or a, a deeper shade of Flufflepuff. <laughs> she's a, she's a warmer color than that dark <laughs> she's green. a deeper the shade <laughs> she is if you notice a deeper shade of Flufflepuff. She, but she's like warm. Yeah, yeah, exactly. that's what she is. Yeah. yeah, and this, I mean, this is a great example of saying any color can be warm or cool, right? Yes. Like this, this is this is a when you look at Chrysalis, those are cool colors. Does she look cool? I don't think so. I feel like her not really body to me feels warm. Her hair feels yeah. cool, um, and areas around it. But it's like when I step back, I feel like all the blue in the piece still feels cool to me. But it like all the greens and the Flufflepuff and how she's colored all feels all yeah. feels warm. I got quieter there. I stepped back from my mic to look at it, but that's okay. It's uh, burned perspective. Um, <laughs> something like that. <sighs> Even though I could just zoom out, but I'm holding my T. That's hard. <laughs> that's too <laughs> much effort. So yeah cute little piece to end off our episode yay it's absolutely adorable adorable uh sao shin does fantastic work with all sorts of stuff not a whole lot of it is pony but if you really want to see some good artists that don't just specialize in pony go see yeah him. if yes. you actually go to this piece in our favorites gallery and click it uh sao shin likes to link the other pieces that uh He's made in like the bottom of the little of uh, his description there. Yeah. So there's like the Flutterbat one we've talked about, some other really awesome ones, and even the Discord one from the Elements of Harmony that we featured. Also, yeah. oh my gosh, Toothless and Spike. Right. There's the most amazing Toothless art ever that you will see. Like how to train your dragon fan art in the Sardis Gallery. Just go look yeah. at it. Yeah. We'd feature right. it if we could. Yeah. All right. <laughs> well then. We are done our art for this week, guys. So um, that means that we are on to the super secret questions. Secret? Where's the They're questions? Not that super They're all there. Well, well, we're 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 doing something. We're going back to something a bit different, aren't we, uh, Emma Spark? We are. I'm not going to tell you guys the questions beforehand. Oh my goodness! Yeah. yeah. It's fun. Yeah. I like watching Burn Square. The old changeling switcheroo. Well, it just means that. If he doesn't have the questions prepared, then we can yell at him live on the show. And if he does have the questions prepared and they're bad questions, he'll just have to go find more. So it motivates you to find actually good questions. Man, I was like, it's the question section. I better click on the document, open it back up, and go look at the questions. They're not there. Nope. (laughs) <laughs> All right, I'm just going to close the entire window. So, Let's have it, questions, Apple. master. Spin us a question or two. Okay, your first question here is, what is your favorite thing to do on a hot summer's day? By Sun and Blitz. Uh, What's your favorite thing to do on a hot summer's day? Huh. Interesting question. I, I okay, so this is going to sound a bit sad, but I'm going to say it anyways. I don't have, like, I don't have, like, people I would go to, like, a pool with. Um, all, of, all of my close friends, uh, IRL, are all, like, have been dating people for like two or three years so it's always a bit weird to like gather like four or five of them together without turning it into like a a couple's day and then i'm just like oh okay (laughs) (laughs) so uh i don't actually go out and do that much in the summer um but i do actually really like heading out to pools and stuff so if i did have like a preferential thing then it would be heading off and uh going and taking a swim i really like i like i really like swimming so yeah Sounds good. Burned. Um, when I was young, I lo- I really loved going like swimming and stuff. Uh, now it's kind of like a little a hobby. But recently, what I've really really loved in like the summer, as it's finally been coming around here in Washington, is uh going downtown to like Portland or like a busy city or something. Or not busy city, but like a somewhere <laughs> going down to Portland and uh going and getting food at like a at a restaurant i really enjoy at like a i don't know not like a really nice restaurant but like a a really good restaurant that like i like mm-hmm. i guess and getting yeah. like um mm-hmm. a really nice beer or something 
with really good food. That's a better way of putting it. My favorite thing to do on a hot summer day or like a really nice summer day is going to like a restaurant I really enjoy and getting a really good beer and like really nice food or something and kind of just sitting outside and I don't know, relaxing. Yeah. Yeah. Because like drinking, like enjoying beer and enjoying food is something that I really enjoy, like finer things in life, if you will. Um, So I like uh, like going down to like maybe the waterfront or like and like sitting next like on like a patio or something like out all next to the water or whatever. I don't know. That's cool. I'm getting old like my father. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. I would, I would enjoy doing that too. Um, well, I live near one of the best beaches in the world. So what I like to do on the hot summer day is go for a swim at the beach because it's great fun. Yeah. It's Australians. And... Never lived anywhere with a beach. Yeah, it's Sorry, true. I live in Canada <laughs> where we have like no beaches. At least like uh, I, I guess there's some beaches, but we're really not known for our beaches. We are, where I live. We're known for our ice-cold waters. Um, we're also known for our theme parks, and they're also fun to go to on a hot summer's day. That is true. Mm-hmm. That's very true. Well, I haven't been to one for a while, though, but yeah. I have a reason to go to them now. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, I, yeah, I, I really just, I mean, when it comes down to stuff in the summer, I just enjoy being able, like, I, I just enjoy being able to go outside and, like, not have mm-hmm. to make it an entire freaking mission. Because mm-hmm. I live in Canada, so we endured like three months of negative twenty, and summer only happens for like three months <laughs> here. Well, I guess it happens for three months everywhere, but like, it really is a short period. It feels like a short period of time where it's actually summer in Canada. So you know, just being able to go outside in like a in like a shorts in shorts and t-shirt, like that's that's just that in <laughs> itself nice is enough. Nice. <laughs> also, like hiking, that's something else too that I'll that'll do. That's good fun. Go too. take a hike. Just being bird. outside. I mean, I lived in Alaska, so like beaches and theme parks were exactly an option, you know. Yeah. Uh, oh yeah. How so, are you? Like, How are your Alaskan children? Uh, they're eating. We've been over this. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Anyway, so like hiking was sure, always sure. something awesome, and then even here in the Pacific Northwest, like pretty much hiking, like so beaches aren't exactly an option. Blah blah blah. Mm. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. All right. Well. Well, that's our answers. We'll move to the next question, huh? Uh, I think I just mumbled there. I'm sorry. Is it? Is it a? Is it a quick one? Mm. Just say it. We'll go over. Do it. Okay. Can be. Okay. Burn doesn't time. make that decision, but but Do then Burn, it. you're just gonna have to make your answer quick. We got we got, we got a couple minutes. All right. So next question: When you are looking for inspiration, what is your go-to thing? Ugh. Or. I guess, in other words, what is your favorite thing to do for inspiration? Yeah. That's another way of putting it. Or if, like, if you're in a slump, how do you right, like, get like personally inspired? Like, per- yeah. our personal inspirations. That yeah. Kind of thing. So yeah. All right. Um, let's go first this time. Uh, I think one of my favorite things is ponies. Like, obviously, that's why I'm here doing this. Like, my favorite go-to thing is uh, the colorful horses. I really love that. Um, also, museums, I guess. I really like going and seeing, like, and appreciating things that are physically, like, should be appreciated and have withstanded the ages. Is art history I can blame for that. So that's another way I like getting inspiration, I suppose. I think that's about it. I don't content create much, so. Yeah. Yeah, fair enough. I think that's kind of, like, a, a common theme is that we're not other... I mean, I guess this counts as content, right? But, like, you know we don't necessarily go out and get inspiration for the show. It's more of like a live thing, right? Um, yeah. So this is our content that we create. Uh, so we're not tremendously, I don't know, content creators. But, you know, um, my goal is to be a content creator. And, and so my inspiration is usually related to the stuff that I want to make, really. Like, that's that's so, like, you know, if, if I'm thinking about, you know the the kind of things I want to make for like a video game. Then I'll go out and I'll, I'll check that kind of stuff. It's it's always related to what I'm doing, and it kind of relates back to motivation, right? Because because I want to get myself motivated and be like, I want to make something like that or like that's really cool. Like I should see if I should do something. So so for mm-hmm. me, it's it's related to whatever I want to use the inspiration for. Mm-hmm. Yeah, when I was younger, I like. Uh, video games were kind of an inspiration that I'd like, like War War ha- or Warcraft. You know, mm-hmm. I would play the Warcraft yeah. custom maps and be like, oh, "I'm gonna make cool maps like this." Yeah. yeah. <laughs> cool. Um, I guess have you answered Rainbow Puzzle? Yeah. We both just answered. <laughs> Go ahead, bud. I, I, I wasn't sure whether that was your answer. Yeah, yeah, that was my. my okay, mine. Um, I tend to get inspired 
by music. Like, um, I've had a couple of ideas stuck in the back of my head since I heard these particular songs. One by, I can't remember, and the other one by also, I can't remember. It was a while ago. I love those. I love those. (laughs) (laughs) Go and listen to their stuff. Um, Sorry, one of them was by Hate Seed. Um, There we go. Yeah, I can't cannot remember the other one. That's but fine. yeah, it's more that than really anything else. Or all something will happen in my life and I'm like, huh, that's kinda of funny, or that's kinda of cool. I should do something like that. <laughs> and then that'll happen. Right. Yeah. I feel like music's a really common inspiration. Not saying it's like a bad inspiration, but you know, it's like, Oh, I love listening to music or whatever to inspire me. I feel like that's mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah. Yeah. Inspiration is something that's just not popped up in my life. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Like ponies was really the first thing. It was like, oh, holy crap! Like these these horses, they won't get out of a goddamn head. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I mean, like, uh, inspiration, I feel, is a lot of the times just kind of like random, and it just kind of happens. So you know, like, it's sometimes hard to predict where you're gonna find inspiration, right? Hmm. All right. I find inspiration in magic cards actually a fact <laughs> i'll just randomly spend like several hours just creating a deck and then never play it inspiration's <laughs> odd yeah it is pokemon it is anyways um who was that second question from oh sorry that second question was from ramslack ramslack thanks okay. ramslack awesome well thank you for your questions guys uh that's that's everything for this episode we are done here so um yeah that is wow so i guess next week we're we're, we're gonna we're gonna have some stuff back here but uh this week we've still got plugs don't we yeah man i feel like i feel like i'm so out of it like we <laughs> haven't done like a regular episode in like two and a half months and i'm just like frazzled about what I the haven't order done is the plugs in a long time all of our guests have been doing it yeah yeah so you're gonna have to do the plugs <laughs> we got five plugs bud and you gotta you gotta remember them we've and they've changed a bit Buggerinos. recently uh, I'm pretty sure I can get them. Yeah. Okay, so we have a DeviantArt, which is kiakrusaders.deviantart.com. We also have a Gmail, which is kiakrusaders at gmail.com. We also have a Facebook, which is kiakrusaders on Facebook. Twitter is at kiakrusade. And the new one, which is kiakrusaders.tumblr.com. There are two posts on there at the moment. Mm-hmm. Well, is one your face? No. No, sadly. <laughs> I don't know what the second one is, but I know the first one was me... The second one was me. Ah, uh, snap. So the third one's going to be me. So, so yeah, we're... You think I'm going to let you do that? We're we're going to... Uh, this week, we didn't do the Tumblr thing for... Or, sorry, this week as in last week. Um, we didn't do the, the Tumblr thing for the reminding for episodes. And that's because uh, Mr. Flutter Guy completely forgot... Uh, so uh, we're gonna we're gonna get that all going so that if you if you follow us on Tumblr then you'll you'll get notified uh, when when Ooh. the episode's gonna go up. Ooh oh, and you can also tumble at us now, <laughs> or however you do that, like submit things to us on Tumblr if like you have fan art or something, and then we'll like reblog it. I think is what you yeah. do. Yeah. yeah. You we know, can do that. Yeah, also, questions. If you have a question, you can ask us through there. Yes. If you're that's like, kind of, like hey, I have a question for these guys. Mm-hmm. That's kind of exciting because I know the stuff about us has been posted on Tumblr. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right. So, yeah, remember, we, we got a Tumblr and we're starting to use it more. So, you guys you guys wanted it. So, let's, you know, I think. I, I need think... stuff to post there. Where's the content? Exactly. exactly. Top, top. And, and we're, we're totally <laughs> we're totally open. That's kind of a place for us to answer questions that wouldn't necessarily make it onto the show. So, bang, bang, boom. Mm-hmm. There you go. Bish, bash, bosh. Bish, bash, bosh. All right. Well, that is everything for this week, guys. Next week, we're going to have uh, Mr. Flutter Guy back on the podcast, hopefully. Uh, Burned, you should be here, too. Uh, and, yeah, everyone, every, the whole gang. whole gang should be back next week, so that should be good. Um, I don't know what our theme is. Uh, let's put it up on the screen right now. Hey. And so that's that's our theme for next week. Um, as always, we can we can, you know, you can send in themes suggestions for us as well. Uh, so that would be cool if you could do that. Um, yeah, that's everything. That's it for this week. So, uh, we hope that you guys enjoyed this episode 102. Um, whether or not you're on the live stream or on YouTube, we love you all the same. And without further ado, my name is Rainbow Plasma. Hi, my name's Brenda One. I'm Apple Spark. And we'll see you guys next week. Yes, we will. Mm-hmm.